Hello there and welcome to another jet vlog about applying for jet. Uh, this is number three. I'm out today, out and about. Um, today uh, I'm in the midst of Shinjinsen. Shinjinsen is the debut of the new seventh graders, the Ichinensei, um, in their sports teams. So I'm out here at Hamayama Koen, Hamayama Park. Lots of bicycles, soccer fields, track stadium. You can hear them over there. They're taking penalty kicks to decide a soccer match. I hate when that happens. Um, if my junior high wins, then they will play my other junior high tomorrow morning. Um, I'm about to go in and watch some more volleyball, and then maybe I'll have time in a little bit to go catch some kendo. Anyway, um, I've had a few comments on my first two applying for JET vlogs, and I wanted to address those in this vlog today. Um, so what is JET looking for? Um, what kind of person um, makes the ideal JET candidate? Um, so you can start to think about tailoring your statement of intent, your letter, uh, and uh, maybe some other things on your application. Well, it, it, that's, a, that's a difficult question to answer. Um, I've met so many different jets from many, many countries. Um, and while we all share a common, uh, one thing in common at least, and that's we're all college graduates, so we're all fairly intelligent humans. <laughs> and uh, we all are obviously native English speakers for the most part. Um, it's hard to really describe or, uh, you know, really find any one particular trait. Um, I think a certain level of a word that you'll hear a lot when you get to Japan is genkiness. Um, I think you have to be fairly outgoing to do this job. Some jets would argue that you can be too outgoing or that genkiness can get in the way of, you know, uh, qualitative teaching. Um, but especially if you're going to do what I do, which is teach, you know, primarily 12, 13, 14 year olds and the occasional kids younger than that at elementary school, uh, you know, you have to get up there and, uh, you know, engage them in some manner beyond the material. Because, you know, let's face it, when you were in school, um, you know, and studying Spanish or French or German or Japanese even, um, you know, how engaging was that material for you on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, you know, and the motivation to study when you're, say, 17 and are thinking about a career ahead of you, um, it, 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 you know, going to Japan is way different than a 12-year-old who's, quote-unquote, forced to study English. Um, so, keeping that in mind, um, I think you want to, you know, describe yourself um, in some fashion in your essay, uh, you know, that you've done something outgoing or something uh, with a group or been in a leadership position at some point, um, volunteered, been a tutor, anything like that um, helps. Uh, you know, one person asked me in the comments, um, does the JET program actually discourage, not discourage, um, discriminate against people who maybe speak Japanese too well or who know too much about Japan? Um, I would say no, but um, it is true that they don't want you to have lived in Japan for too long and they don't want you to be too familiar with the country. I, I will say that. Um, if you you know, get to the level where you're that fluent in Japanese, um, I would recommend that you maybe try to be a CIR instead of an ALT. Um, they're very different jobs with a little bit of overlap um, in the sense that some CIRs do do some teaching, um, but uh, you know, that's a discussion for another day. Um, they want you a big part of JET, which is the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program, and the exchange, the E in JET, they want you to come over and do this very nebulous word, which is internationalization. So they, they do want you to have somewhat of a fresh perspective on it. And um, 
you know, see Japan through new eyes to a certain extent and be able to relate things that are different about your culture than Japanese culture. So, yeah, how to, how to approach it if you feel like you're too well versed in Japanese culture. Certainly, you know, if you get to the interview stage, you wouldn't want to go in and uh, talk about, you know, how much you uh, love, you know, oh, I don't know, ikebana, you know, flower arrangement, or some, you know, oh, I've mastered tea ceremony in my weekend, you know, shogi class, so we play every, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, you might want to pull back a little bit. Um, but I think they definitely want a healthy interest in Japan. You know, I've met so many Jets that come here that know so little about the country and speaks, you know, zero of the language. Definitely, you know, they don't want that. The other extreme, I wouldn't say that it's bad, but um, maybe don't overemphasize your ability if you're that well-versed. Because if, if you're just like a Japanese person, then why do they need you? You know, if you're if you know everything about Japan and speak fluent Japanese, you know, that's not exactly what they're looking for. So, all right, well, the game is breaking up. People are going to start walking this way and looking at me like, why is that man speaking to a camera? So I think that's going to be it. Maybe a shorter vlog today. Um, more to come. I'm pretty busy this week, but I will try to get one done again by the weekend. Okay? As always, thanks for watching. Leave comments. I'll try to get back to you as much as I can. And uh, more soon. Bye.